Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Diagramming English While Learning Latin. This is from the First Year Latin Book by Robert Henley. We're in Chapter 2, and today we learn to diagram prepositions. All right, in our sentence we have, The Romans waged war with the Gauls. Subject of the sentence is the Romans. Subject of the sentence, nominative case. What are they doing? They're waging, or they did wage, verb. What did they wage? They waged war, direct object, accusative case. They waged war with, preposition with whom, the Gauls, object of the preposition, with the Gauls, prepositional phrase, oblative case. This is the phrase to watch today because we're learning to diagram these guys. The is an article adjective, the is an article adjective. Let's go down here and diagram this, then we'll translate it into Latin. So we always start with a straight line, which we divide. We have the subject on the subject side, so Romans, what are they doing? Or what did they do? They waged. What did they wage? They waged war. Since war is a direct object, it's in the accusative case. It goes on a main line after this half stick here. Okay, they waged war with. What kind of war? It was a war with Gauls. Gauls on the object of the preposition line here. So when you have a prepositional phrase, you always... Uh, find out where it's going to go, and if, uh, let's say, it's describing the subject, then we would put a preposition line after uh, or underneath the subject, and uh, the preposition line is the slanted line, and then th there would be a straight line off the slanted line, and that's where the object of the preposition goes. So the preposition goes here, the object of the preposition goes on the straight line which is what we have here. We have with, which is a preposition, and then we have the Gauls, which is the object of the preposition. Now all that's left to do is add the article adjectives. With the Gauls, the Romans, waged war with the Gauls. Let's get rid of all this so we can translate. And let's translate. So, the Romans, Romani, the Romani what? There's a phrase in Latin for waged war, and it's bellum gerit. So we're going to put it in Roman word order here. Romani bellum. Now we're talking about Romans. It's plural, so we're going to use the plural verb. Romani bellum gerunt. The Romani bellum gerunt. So we now have the Romans waged war. The only thing we need now is with the Gauls. We need some Gauls to wage war with. So we have cum. And this is plural, so gol, oops, that's wrong. Galus is one gaul. That would be a masculine gaul. So with more than one gaul would be gallis. So Romani bellum gerunt cum gallis. Now, of course, bad Latin word order. Uh, it, we would switch this to, this would be the first word in the sentence, Romani. This would be probably the second. This is the third, Romani cum Gallis. And then we would have fourth, fifth. Romani cum Gallis, bellum gerunt. Romani cum Gallis, bellum gerunt. The boys were in the forest. Subject of the sentence? Boys, subject of the sentence, nominative case, what were they doing? Well, they were just were, they existed, right? They were in the forest, so this is our verb. In is a preposition, in what? Forest, object of the preposition, in the forest, prepositional phrase, oblative case. Article adjective here, article adjective here. We don't have to translate those because the Romans didn't have them, but we do need to put them in our diagram. So, we have boys on the subject side, were on the verb side. The boys. I usually put those in at the end. I'm not sure why I did that there. Okay, in on a preposition line. It's going to be slanted just like an adjective. However, we're going to have a straight line off of the bottom of it, and that's where we're going to put the object of the preposition. In forest. In the forest. So now we have a diagram. The boys were in the forest. All that's left is to translate it. Boys, pueri, even though my Male students hate this. This is where we get the English word pueril, which means immature and childish. Sorry, guys. Pueri, errant, in Silva. And this is where we get Sylvia, Sylvester, Transylvania, Pennsylvania.
bad Latin word order again, of course. So we're going to change this to pueri, number one, in, number two, silva, number three, errant, number four. Pueri and silva errant. Pueri and silva errant. The farmer was in the valley. Subject of the sentence, farmer. Subject of the sentence, nominative case. He was, verb, he was where? He was in. In is a preposition. In what? Valley, object of the preposition. In the valley, prepositional phrase, oblative case. The is an article adjective. The is an article adjective. By the way, was here is a state of being verb. You can tell it's a state of being verb if you can replace it with the word exists or existed. So, the farmer existed in the valley? Yes, that works. So, this is a state of being verb. All right, let's diagram this. Farmer. The farmer what? Was. The farmer was in, on the prepositional line. Prepositional line looks like, looks like an adjective, but then at the bottom of it, we had a straight stick out for the object of the preposition. The farmer was in valley. Then we just add the article adjectives. The farmer was in the valley. Okay, translate this into Latin. Agricola. Erat. He was in. And the word for valley in Latin is valis. But since it's a third declension, its oblative singular is valle. Uh, agricola erat in valle, or agricola, agricola in valle erat. Agricola in valle erat. There was a battle on the island. Subject of the sentence. This one's a little weird, but it's battle. Subject of the sentence, nominative case. A battle what? A battle was. It existed. Verb. It's a state of being verb, actually. A battle existed, or a battle was, that's supposed to say there, there was a battle on the island, not the was a battle on the island. On preposition, on what island object of the preposition, on the island prepositional phrase, oblative case, the article adjective, a uh, is an article adjective, and there is actually an expletive. It's not a bad word, it's just an extra word in the sentence, so we'll talk about how to diagram that in just a second. Okay, let's start with the subject. Battle was on island the. All right, so battle was on the island, or a battle, I'm sorry. A battle was on the island. We could probably just leave it at that, but we still have this extra word here, this expletive. With an expletive, you just stick it at the top of the sentence like this. And we just write it up there. There. There was a battle on the island. Evidently, the early grammarians who came up with diagramming, they didn't know what to do with it either. There was a battle on the island. All right. In Latin, we don't even have to translate there because we have there was can be translated by the word erat. So we can say erat. Battle is proelium. Erat proelium. In insula. Erat proelium in insula. And honestly, we would probably just say proelium, proelium, erat, or proelium in insula erat. And put erat over here at the end. Proelium in insula erat. Okay, one more. The Romans came into camp. Subject to the sentence, Romans. Subject of the sentence, nominative case, what did they do? They came, verb, where did they come? They came into, preposition, into what? Camp, object of the preposition. This whole thing here is a prepositional phrase, into the camp, prepositional phrase. It's accusative case because we have the word into here. And then the is an article adjective. Okay? Romans came into camp and the article adjective the Romans came into camp and in Latin Romani viniunt 
vini erunt, because it's past, they came, it's over, it happened in the past. Romani vini erunt in castra. Romani vini erunt in castra. Castra is a plural noun that has a singular meaning. That's not completely uncommon in Latin. Romani avinierunt in castra. We could change this to proper Roman order by switching vinierunt from the middle of the sentence to the end of the sentence. By the way, castra is where we get so many of the English cities that have Chester in them. There's actually the city of Chester, but then there's Manchester, there's Dorchester, there's Winchester. All of those cities in England or in the United Kingdom which have Chester at the end of their name are old Roman camps, which personally I find fascinating. And it comes from this word right here, castra. All right, well, that's it for today. If if you need to or want to find out more about Greek, Latin, English, and all their connections to each other, then check out DwayneThomas.com. You can also sign up over there for my tip of the week, where every Saturday I'll send you a, a tip or an idea for learning another language. You can also subscribe below to the YouTube channel. And uh, there's multiple ways to contact me if you've got any questions. See you around, guys.